So we have opportunities to a lot of opportunities for foreign companies to act in Brazil in different areas. And if you compare uh, the value of real, our currency, with dollar and euro, we can confirm that it's it's cheap to to invest in Brazil. hear now about mergers and acquisitions businesses here in Brazil and I'll talk now to Vicente Bagnoli he's attorney here in the country expert in competition law how were these kind of businesses here in the country last year 2017 was a interesting year the figure shows that we had an increase of six percent of the number of uh, acquisitions regarding 2016 and we had uh, both brazilian companies going to the market to to shop but also foreign companies that started to to invest and to to act here in brazil which kind of companies, Brazilian companies, are going abroad to shop? It's interesting. We had uh, we have a Natura, that's a cosmetic cosmetic company that in the past uh, already bought Adzop from Australia, and last year bought the Body Shop, a British company. What is expected for this year? Well, this is a special year in Brazil because we have the, the election of the new president. So at the first semester of the, the year, uh, it's probably that we have a lot of uh, auctions uh, uh, regarding infra infrastructure as airports, uh, railroads, roads, uh, energy, uh, and the government of Brazil has to foster to, to do this in the first semester. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to, to do in the se second semester when the, the politicians will be aware with the elections. So you didn't have a summer vacation this year? No, no summer vacations. <laughs> Fortunately, the weather is not so good in Brazil this year. <laughs> Which sectors uh, can we expect businesses in this area? Um, I would say infrastructure. Uh, it's the area for the foreign companies to invest in Brazil. I would say airports that started last year. Um, roads, interesting, that's not only federal roads, but we have, for instance, in Sao Paulo, uh, roads being privatized. Uh, and now in the city of Sao Paulo, we have uh, soccer stadiums that can be converted to arenas to offer more than soccer games. Uh, we have uh, IMB, that is um, maybe the, the biggest convention center of Latin America that's going to be privatized. And also the F1 uh, Arena, uh, Interlagos, that will be privatized. Out. So it's a very interesting year for foreign investors that want to, to put money here in Brazil. Depending on the next uh, stronger candidate for the presidency, do you think it can spoil some businesses? Yes, uh, it's interesting because we don't have already the candidates. We have possible candidates. And if you, we, if you see the extremely right or extremely left candidates, basically they have the same idea. It's the, a very strong state no privatization, stated owned, owned companies. But if you go to the middle, to the center, we see candidates, possible candidates, that they are favorable for privatize the companies. It's interesting that one economist that is working with a possible candidate already mentioned to privatize in 2019 Petrobras, that is a, a sensitive uh, subject here in Brazil. Uh, and it's interesting also because the, the current government announced to privatize Eletrobras, a 
very strong energy company in Brazil in the first semester of this year. But other possible candidates already said, no, if we privatize Pet uh, Eletrobras, we will change this if uh, I am elected for president. So uh, I think uh, it's a... Um, it's a moment that we see a lot of privatizations in Brazil and depending on the, the economy we have a candidate elected favorable for privatizations but if the economy of this year is not so good probably we have uh, extremists or from left or from right that are against privatizations. And what can you say about regulation and rules or new rules in this kind of businesses? Uh, it's interesting uh, talking about new rules uh, because uh, we have a, a merger that started last year. Uh, we had a, the first decision of CADI, the, the super the General Superintendent of CADI recommended the approval of a merger with remedies. I'm talking about XP Investments and Itaú. Uh, it's a fintech, X, uh, XP Investment, that have been acquired, not the control, but 49% of the company by Itaú, that's a traditional bank. And we don't have uh, yet uh, rules for fintechs. And we know that central bank are preparing some rules for this market and we have a uh, CADI, the competition authority, dealing with a merger, let's say that, of a fintech with a traditional bank. How can this interfere in the market? Which are the best remedies to approve this merger? We will see in the next months. What are the other remarkable cases? Uh, other remarkable cases. Uh, it was a, a brand new case that was announced on December 31st. That is the the bot of 99. It's an app, uh, a platform, a disruptive technology that put together taxis and uh, and and people uh, and passengers and it was bought by Didi Chin Didi Chan Hang sorry for my Chinese <laughs> <laughs> and Didi bought uh, 99 the interesting subject in this case is uh, we have a Uber in Brazil and a few years ago 99 that was working only with tax taxis with cabs cabs he started to offer the the same service of Uber competing in the market with Uber and the arrival of uh, DD uh, means that in Brazil we have the maybe the, the the strongest players of this kind of private rights competing here DD with the name 99 and Uber. And you also have a Cabify and others, but it will be something interesting to watch in the, the next, uh, ne next months. What else? Uh, what else? Uh, oh, I, th I guess other subject interesting to mention about Brazil for this, years, for this year is that uh, we had a change in the, how we, we can understand our foreign, uh, foreign trade, foreign, foreign political trades. So uh, Brazil, with Argentina, Uruguay and Paraguay, they restarted to thinking about the real purpose of Mercosul as a, a trade area, commercial area. So it's very possible that we we already actually we already had an increase of the the, the trades among these countries, and we are preparing uh, an agreement with the European Union that can be very positive for Mercosul. But also Mercosul is uh, started to, to talk with the Pacific Alliance, Chile, Colombia, Mexico and Peru, uh, to, to increase the, the trades among all these countries. And it can be also uh, a door to the TPP. So companies that are in Brazil, investing in Brazil, they can have this opportunity to sell not only in the Brazilian market, but Mercosur and have uh, doors to European Union and also to, to TPP and Pacific Alliance.
Do you think foreign investors kind of uh, ignore our political uh, instability and see that Brazil is cheap now? Yes, I consider I consider Brazil is still cheap, uh, and one of the factors that that contribute to that is the car wash of investigation. We had uh, very strong companies in Brazil that are involved in the, this huge investigation uh, and they have to sell. They, they cannot more operate in the market in different areas. So they have to sell even to pay their, their agreements or condemnations in lenience agreements. So we have opportunities to, a lot of opportunities for foreign companies to act in Brazil in different areas. And if you compare uh, the value of real, our currency, with dollar and euro, we can confirm that it's, it's cheap to, to invest in Brazil. Even if you have a lot of rules, or a lot of uh, complication with taxations, regulatory issues, bureaucracy, a lot of bureaucracy, but I think it is still worthwhile to, to invest in Brazil. Back to elections this year, do you think businesses can uh, go slowly or uh, stop next semester, the second semester? Uh, I think the, I recall, the, I will not say stop, but I recall they will reduce their speed. Uh, it's something normal because uh, when you want to invest, you, you look for a, a safety zone. A stability, and if you don't know the which will be the, the next president, which are the the ideas of the, the this president, or what what this president think for the country, uh, it's uh, probably you will not invest. You wait and see. Okay, I wait for 2019. This means that uh, I, the mergers and acquisitions that we have in Brazil, the, the most important things, the biggest one, I guess they will happen in the first semester. In the second semester, there is small business. And in 2019, uh, I believe uh, will be another year with another president and we have a lot of business doing uh, starting in 2019, but not in the second semester of 2018. Probably f firstly uh, investors will study the new president, the new scenario before investing again. For sure, for sure, yes. Vicente Bagnoli, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you. Luciane Miranda to do Cascop TV. Thank you.